building than what it was. Like, it was yeah. just, like, a rundown hovel, Oh, really, yeah. eh? So you know knowing of this, like, a while Oh, back. yeah, because, like, so my dad and I actually parked, like, right across the street to go to the Flames games and stuff uh-huh. like that. So I've been coming past this building for my entire life. Yeah. No, I lived up in the Northeast. But we, uh, just, we, we have season's tickets to the Flames. Okay. And so we were down here 40 times a year, right? 30 mm-hmm. times a year or something like that to come watch. Oh, wow. That's um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm. I was so happy when I saw this. I'm like, oh, this is a beautiful place. Now it's nice to get to really see it. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's uh, I, I was driving by here one time and I was kind of like looking for a spot for like uh, I, I think to do the podcast because I had this idea like, yeah, I'll just go all around the city and do my podcast and whatnot. And as we were driving by and I seen like this place, I'm like, man, this place looks very neat. And so I was able to pull over. And I went in there, I talked to them, just to say hi and compliment them on uh, on the place. And uh, yeah, and that small greeting just led from one thing to the next thing. It's much like, I was listening to your podcast and you were talking about um, how you could just, if you're in a town, you could just talk to the locals, yeah. yes. ask them questions. And it's one of those things. And if you're genuine, people feel that. The body energy, you know, it resonates with others, right? <laughs> yeah, so. Um, so the way this worked, this is like a half an hour episode. Um, so I will put on a timer because I got to get up every 15 minutes and shut it off and turn it back on. Um, I used to leave it. The camera itself has the potential of running for like 28, 20. 28, 25 minutes, depending. But I normally forget because I get so deep into the conversation and then half the shit just <laughs> get recorded and the camera's off. So <laughs> we set a timer now for like 15 minutes and then I will get up. And if you are in the middle of your speech, just go ahead and finish your thought. Yeah. Yeah. And once you're done, we I get up and turn them off and turn them back on again and we resume from that point on. Sweet. Um, yeah, so another thing, too, that I do, so it doesn't matter how long I know you for, because I mess up people's names all the time. <laughs> so now I introduce myself. I point to you. You introduce yourself. It's good. <laughs> love, it, love it. I like it. I like it. All right. That's awesome. All right, man. So I'm going to start the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of 18 Avenue Podcast. I am your host, Rico Bottles, and today joining me here is a very special guest. I'm Robert Massey. It's good to see you guys. It's a pleasure, pleasure, pleasure having you. And if this is your first time tuning into the podcast, make sure you follow us on the YouTube channel. We also have Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can basically listen to this podcast anywhere you currently listen to your uh, listen to your podcast. Uh, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor Podcasts, so you can find us on all of these various platforms. Uh, and to give you a quick heads up about what this podcast is about, this podcast is basically about, it's a platform that explores cultural people and their stories. So if that's the kind of thing you're into, you most suddenly have tuned into the right podcast. Welcome again. How's it going, Robert? Not bad. How's it going today, Rico? Man, it's a beautiful day out here. Or just out here. it is stupid gorgeous you were right though because yesterday you were like yeah we should do it i love that i love you cut me off guard actually because i was like okay cool so yeah i would love to invite you here you're like oh you know what how about tomorrow and i was like i love that (laughs) let's do this i got time (laughs) (laughs) Uh, that's awesome man so thank you for being on the show no worries um you know I tend to run into different characters all the time. And I know we ran into each other just when the snow was melting just recently. And, uh, yeah, you want to tell the people what it is you do and everything. Yeah, sure. So I'm uh, an adventure portrait photographer and a podcaster, actually, here in Calgary. Mm. So basically, adventure portraiture is you go out and you take pictures of people doing kick-ass things in the mountains. Uh, (sighs) So, like, we go hiking and rock climbing and mountain biking and just awesome things like that so you get to go explore Mm -hmm. Um, and then i do travel photography and then i run a podcast called the travel and adventure photography school which is just teaching people about travel and adventure photography and how you can do it better by yourself and not have to hire a professional to go out and take kick-ass photos of what you're doing so 
You do a fantastic. I mean, you talk it down right now. People are like, <laughs> I don't know if I should tune in. Look, listen, guys. If you're not listening to this podcast, you're absolutely missing out. Uh, the, the episode is like 15 minutes long each time, and it's so informative. I feel like I'm literally listening to a professor teach me how to do this um, different photo because that's something I never had the eyes for. I never had the eyes for landscape. I stand up with the camera and I'm lost. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. So how do you decide? <laughs> like, how did you develop an eye for that? And how do you decide this is what I should be shooting? Uh, that eye for that came out of photojournalism, of all things. Mm. So it comes from, there, there's kind of like two takes on landscape photography. One of them is like the super artistic, beautiful side of it. And one of them is documenting the world as you see it in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of the way I approach landscape, approach adventure photography, all that kind of stuff. And it's, it came out of photojournalism, and it came out of this, I want to tell a story of the landscape and a story of the people that are around me, not mm -hmm. just create an art piece, but tell a story. And that's what's really important to me, and that's why I love photography, is it's storytelling. And that's super important. So, And I appreciate the awesome, kind words about the podcast. It's fun to do. So It is. It's <laughs> super awesome. I'm not going to lie about that. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I was blown away. Um, so before you got into photography, like who inspired you first and foremost to kind of like you know, um, to get behind photography, did your parents kind of, did your father maybe dabble into a little bit of photography? Like, how did you, you know, find the camera? Uh, it was kind of a backwards route into it. It got handed to me in journalism school. So I went into journalism school to try and become a sports reporter. So, like, I loved sports as a kid, but I was terrible. Mm. So I was like, I'm never going to do this professionally. <laughs> like, <laughs> be honest about that. I was bad. <laughs> But I loved them. So I was like, oh, what's a better way to get, stay in sports than, like, be a sports journalist? Got it. Um, and then, so when you're in school, they hand you a camera at the same time. And it just kind of developed into, like, this love of sports photography and this love of action photography through my journalism schooling. So it was actually kind of threw my family off guard because I'd never expressed interest in photography until I was in school for print journalism, of all things. <laughs> <laughs> And how much of, I mean, you still do it now. You, you're still doing, very much still doing, like, journalism with photojournalism. Yeah. Just not with interviewing, per se. Do you ever get to interview people as well? Not often anymore. Okay. Yeah, I'd love to get to doing back to more of that, but mm -hmm. I just kind of like going out and telling stories of people through photos now. I think that tends to be a lot more of what we do. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And do you normally, after you take the picture, do you kind of like leave like a little head in as to like what was going on in the environment, what your train of thought was, what made you kind of take the image to have that information out there? Or is it just like a beautiful photograph? That's it. You decide. what, what was, Is that kind of what you do? That's kind of what I do. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I'll put like a little extra hint behind it if there was something right, like right. huge. But for the most part, I just like snap the image, keep going with life, especially on some of the like I was hiking up. Forget Me Not Ridge last Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just this gorgeous sunset, but we wanted to get down through this one chunk before it got dark. So I'm like shooting images while we're sliding down the mountain. Oh, that's but beautiful. Like, yeah. So you sometimes don't have a chance to really think about what you're doing. You just snap right. the shot off and go. Right. And and I also been like watching your page, man. Like your images are just, mm, it has that whole, I know I'm bigging you up right now, but <laughs> anyone who knows me knows that. I typically don't really get a, get behind a lot of things if I don't really believe in it. And your images are, like, fa fascinating. And I've seen a lot of them all travel sometime in the woods, in the mountain. Are these, like, all recent stuff that you've been kind of going out there and doing? Or is this just, like, post-dated work? Uh, most of it's recent. So okay. almost everything that I post is coming from the last, within the last couple of months, depending on what it is so like the one that got up yesterday was from forget me not ridge mm -hmm. the ones from a couple days before that were from walking around calgary and stuff like that i've been doing a lot more work off my not with my big slr anymore and a lot more with my iphone because mm -hmm. um, we're actually starting to write a course to teach people how to do like travel photography with their iphone and just using like your phone and just now. using your phone mm -hmm. yeah so that's a lot of it's just coming from wandering around in the city and in the mountains because that's what i love to do so uh, that's actually pretty awesome and also like um and there's a lot of that, too, now happening, too. Like, uh, you know, there are some photographers that are just specialized with the devices. They just do it. I do a little bit of it. But like I said, I'm not a very landscape landscapey guy. So um, but I try. I do my best. <laughs> if it comes out great, if it doesn't. You know? <laughs> it's like that time when we met, actually, I shot like this little video. I'm like, yeah, this video might actually turn out to be the video. But it might just be like, ah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this is not the way to go. <laughs> and it wasn't bad. I'm not sure what happened to it after, but. <laughs>
Yeah, you got your lighting down like Pat right now. Like your your skills in photography are just beautiful. Your portraiture, uh huh, it's it's dead on. I oh, thanks, thanks. Um, a lot of it I think comes from uh, this thing of I'm a very persistent guy, and lighting was like the most challenging thing. Camera period was challenging. And then you add lighting to that, and it's, like, double challenging. And it's, like, then the frustration builds. Then you think about quitting. And and I think it was just that idea of, like, no, I'm not going to quit. So now, even before I do a photo shoot now, I will visit that location a few times. And, um, and what I'm looking for there would be things that I can bounce lights off of. If I can bounce light off something, then I'm making note of that prehand to the shoot. <laughs> It's funny. Sometimes I would take the model there. If I'm going to be working with you, I'm like, okay, look, I have the very special shoot. Like I'm working on a series now, Bad to the Bone series. So I would take the model there. I say, okay, this is what we're going to be shooting. And uh, these are, the, and we'll kind of throw around ideas. But I think for the lighting specifically, I think I'm just looking for things that I can bounce the lights off of. Because most of the time I'm using like one lighting or sometimes two lighting um, set up. Yeah. So, yeah. But thanks for that, man. That's That means a lot. That means a lot. You deserve it. They're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, no, thanks. Um, so <clears throat> have you ever, like, done, like, a really bad project? <laughs> and how did you overcome that? How did you bounce back? <laughs> <laughs> Most people disappeared after the bad projects. It's like, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> oh, bad projects. So there was a... Uh... There was a moment when I was in journal when I was in journalist. So I used to work for two small papers just around Calgary, mm -hmm. um, and it was actually during the flood in High River in 2012, mm -hmm. like right before the big one that hit Alberta in 2013. Um, but there was one down High River in 2012, and I was supposed to be shooting it for the paper and doing something like that. And like I was out at like two in the morning mm -hmm. trying to take photos of these guys filling sandbags and doing all, and everything just turned out like garbage. So we had nothing for the paper the next day um, from that night of Ooh. like when it started. And so I was scrambling that morning when I started because, you know, you shoot for two hours at like two to four in the morning. You go home, you sleep for a couple hours, you get up and you try to get to the paper and start putting it all together. Right. And like, I'm looking, I'm like, I got to go back out. Like, I got to go find people still like, I'm like, I, these are literally unusable. Like they were out of focus. They were grainy. I'm like, oh, God. I still have one of them. And I kept it with me because I show it to people when I start doing courses. with okay. them. I'm like, you got to look at this. Like, you got to see how bad this, this is. is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like and this is like three or four years into me shooting but like wow yeah yes. it, was, it was it was truly bad and it happens and it happens it's it happens funny. all the, people don't realize yeah. but yeah. it happens <laughs> it's like oh that was out of focus shoot like yeah yeah um i think there are like there's ways now it's not like before where like if something was out of focus it was like completely unusable i think like there's ways now you can kind of manipulate it, try and bring it back. Even with video too, yeah. you can kind of manipulate, but but it still doesn't look natural. It's better when you get it right. That's the thing with photography. It's very like, you know, get it right. You gotta get it right. You gotta get it right. Get it right, get it right yeah. in camera and put it out. And you save yourself so much work. <laughs> really, like, you don't have to sit at a computer for hours on end. <laughs> um, so what made you start like podcasting? Uh, I love teaching. Your voice is freaking amazing, by the way. Yo, everything about this <laughs> guy is freaking amazing. He's Mr. Amazing right now. <laughs> it's dope. <laughs> I was like, what? Is that the same guy I met? <laughs> what's going this on? can't be the same guy. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> I was blown away, dude. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're going to make me so, like, blush horribly. Oh, dude, go ahead and blush, man. It's all right. It's <laughs> sunny out. <laughs> That's right. It's hot. I'm just getting a sunburn. There you go. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I, my favorite part about photography, what I've started to realize is teaching it to people. Mm. Like, um, like, I love shooting images and I love doing that, but I had a summer student when I was working at another full time gotcha. job and sh she wanted to learn about photography. That was part of the reason she took on the job. And I was like, this is great. So I got to teach her for the summer and I'm like, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. And my favorite thing was seeing where she started. And then at the end of the summer, when we were done, her images were beautiful. Like she had a gr great creative eye that helped, oh. but like her images were great. And I was just like, I love this. Like, that was such a fulfilling thing to see her work progress that much. Right. So that's why I wanted to start doing the podcast was just, like, it's such a great way for people to show off their own talents, be creative. And I kind of feel like there's this there's this thing around photography that's, like, it's this, oh, it's this art form or it's this whatever to create something. It's like, no, you can be creative. You can go out and make art. Mm -hmm. You can go out and be yourself and have some fun with it. It doesn't have to be this serious, stuck-up 
Annie Leibovitz style thing where you have to be in a studio with 8,000 people, mm -hmm. right? Like go out and make something. And that's really what it, that's really what the podcast is kind of about, right? Like here's the tools, but go out and make it and go out and see our world and be a part of our world. So That's amazing, man. That's amazing. What's the farthest journey that you've taken just to go and get a picture? So far, if you've gone. Oh, I, from Calgary specifically, like in a car, the farthest I've gone to do that was to head out to, oh my God, it was in the mountains. We hiked like 12 hours to get into somewhere. Wow. I'm forgetting the name of it now. You hiked like, yeah. on foot? Yeah, so like we, yes, yeah, so like we hit like, the, it was on the Icefield Parkway and then we stopped somewhere and then we hiked for about 12K and then we shot some pictures out there. And it was just fantastic. Like that's and that's what that's what I like to do is I like to take my camera into the middle of nowhere and take some pictures. But like by plane, I've like gone to Zambia to go shooting, and I've gone to like all through Europe, like most people have, and all through the Scandinavian mm -hmm. countries. So yeah, man, that's pretty amazing. I was telling a buddy of mine, he's a really good dancer, and I was saying to him, I was like, "You love dancing, and that's a great thing." But you're kind of like dancing in the same place that people walk past all the time and nobody really you know it's yeah you're a great dancer but after a while people are just sometimes you should like leave and he's like yeah but where would i go to go do dancing i was like well you could literally let me know we can plan something out we can literally maybe go 35 minutes to 40 minutes out of the city find a location there shoot a dance video for you and it'd be great. And he was like, 40 minutes? That's far. <laughs> I, was like, I think I drove 40 minutes to go for a walk last night. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like 40 minutes. It's like, that's far as I do. You're in, the, uh, you're in the gym for like an hour and a half, two hours. But it's because it's something you're so used to. You see, I feel like with us, we just love like, to get familiar with things. When, we, when we're familiar, we get comfortable, we start to get complacent, we start to take things around us for granted, you know? And so, I mean, kudos to you. I haven't been able to do that yet, but that's only because like the opportunity hasn't come up, I think, um, to be able to hike. I don't even know where to go hiking, to be honest with you. Well, let's go. Yeah? yeah. Yeah, when you get back, let's go. Oh, dude, I'm down. All for right. It. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't say that to me because I'll oh, take really? the hiking. Like everyone should see our mountains. All right. Like. They're so spectacular. All right. You need to tell me, like, what gear to get, like, you know, I don't even know where to start, but I I, I definitely take you up on that. Yeah. Sweet. Sounds Just, good to me. So how long have you, like, been hiking and everything? Uh, My first, the first time I hiked a mountain mm -hmm. was 2012. Okay. Actually, and I'll finish the thought after this. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your time. Okay. Um, yeah, no, so it was 2012, and it was actually my brother-in-law got me into it. So he's like this kick-ass, he spends all his time outdoors. There was one year, I think he said he slept outside for 200 days of the year or something like that. Like he'd drive in from the mountains to go to work and go back out to go camping again. And just like, he's an awesome dude. Um, so yeah, we tried to hike up Grizzly Peak in Kananaskis country. And it did not go well. It was the May long yeah. weekend. The snow was still like thigh right. high as you got up further up the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> it started raining like three quarters oh, of the geez. way up. And like, so we eventually got to a point and like everyone else in our group kind of started trailing off and there was like the three of us left and we hit the scree slope right before the saddle to go up to the right. peak. Um, and the scree slope was literally thigh deep snow and we're trying to climb wow. up and it's like, no, we're done. Like, this is the first time I'd ever tried to hike a mountain, pro like a proper mountain. And we're like, no, we're going home. We turn around and it starts uh, raining on us as we come down the mountain and stuff. And I hit one point on there, slipped and slid quite a ways down and ended up slamming the hiking pole I had in and like pushing my feet into it and bending the hiking oh, pole because wow. I was about like to slide over an edge and we finish off the hike and like get down. I'm like, oh, I almost died. Oh, that's cool. Let's go hiking again. This really? is fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Like, it was like. The worst and yet the best introduction to like going into mount going into the mountains, but it also taught me so quickly how dangerous yeah, it can yeah. be and how you need to really respect that weather shift because it was the rain hitting us that caused this huge problem. So, dude, that sounds like I mean it's amazing and everything, but that's not hella scary. That sounds like some things you tell me and I'm like, oof. Maybe I'll <laughs> stay over here where. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'll stay here where there's the cafe. So, right, I stay in the back of the cafe. Just ask me when you get here to tell you where I'm. I'm in the back. Uh, but yeah, that's amazing. So right now we're going to take a quick break, turn off the camera, turn it back on, and when we get back, 
we will get into all about you, family, your life, and everything like that. All right. Perfect. That's we'll good. be right back, people. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for joining us. I am here with Robert Lesson, a travel photographer, podcaster, an amazing, an amazing um, landscape photographer, by the way. So, you know, again, I, I'm going to keep, like, praising him until, like, he teaches me all his tricks. <laughs> then one day I can be like, look, look at this now. Look at what I can do. <laughs> So thank you all for joining us again. And now we are going to take this next um, 15 minutes to dabble into uh, Robert's life and and families and all that. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. So let's uh, let's go into family. So do you have any kids? You're married. No, I got no kids. Okay. Yeah. Got married a year ago. A year ago in August. Oh, wow. Yeah. Congratulations. So, was that here in, in town? Uh, it was in the mountains. <laughs> We went, you got my <laughs> we got went out to a group site in the mountains and had a camping wedding. <laughs> Why not? How fantastic oh, was yeah. that? Oh, so good. And the Okay, on my eyes the weather was perfect. My wife's eyes the weather was the world. <laughs> <laughs> cuz she was in a dress and I was in a suit. Uh, so it was like 12 <laughs> degrees out or something and I loved it, but negative yeah. 12. No, it was plus 12. Oh, plus t- oh, plus 12. Yeah. That's not bad. Plus 12 is not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, I mean, it's still chilly though for a dress, especially in the mountains. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah she was she was windy. cold. We had some shawls on them and things like wow. that. Wow. And how long did you guys stay for? Uh, we were there for three days. Okay. Friday, Saturday, yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So did you just kind of, did you go to a specific place in the mountain where that's known for this kind of event or did you just kind of bust into the mountains and kind of set up there? What did you guys do? Did you do like a deco and any of these things? Like Yeah, so we found a group site that... Okay, what's a group site, by the so way? So a group site's where you can book um, like a huge set for people. Like I think this one had 40 sites for camps or campers to go into. Um, so you can book out the entire thing for yourself. Got it. And then everyone, like, so we had all our, all of our family camps, all of that kind of stuff. Like, this is what, this is what my family does. Right, right. Um, so we all just have our own units. We have tents. We have all that. And they say all just piled into this group campground. And then the, the hall there had a little kitchen and has power to it. So we had power for everything that we needed. We set up the hall with, like, beautiful decorations. And we wanted the ceremony to be outside. So wow. that we had um, – we should have had Grant McEwen Peak in the background, I think. Okay. But then it was it looked like it was going to rain. So we set up the ceremony indoors. It still turned out beautifully, fantastically. So, yeah, it was good. And, like, the greatest thing about it is we got three days. We got to set up. We got to hang out with people. And then at the end of our wedding day, like, we had a Kaylee, which is, like, a Scottish dance party. Okay. Um, instead of like bringing in a DJ, we brought in like a Kaylee you band. Brought, like a Kaylee band. Yeah. It's like forget the DJ. Forget the DJ. <laughs> We're gonna do a Kaylee band. Like it, I lived in Scotland for like six months okay. roughly to go to school. Yeah, yeah. And I fell in love. Like my that's my background. My history is so Scottish. Scottish. Okay. Um and like I was like oh let's honor my history. I love these parties. They're great. Awesome. And so we got everyone up dancing and it was great. And at the end of the night we sat around a campfire. Like there was no better way to finish my wedding day than like hang out with my groomsmen and my brides, the wow. bridesmaids, and sit around a campfire. That's amazing, it, so. man! How many people did you have out there? Uh, 100, 110. Wow, that's a group. Yeah, yeah. that's a yeah, whole. A that's an army. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. I got a lot of family in the area, and we're really tight, and so yeah, yeah, you have to have them all out there. That's beautiful, man. That's something that you don't you don't hear a whole lot of. I mean. I don't know. The Western culture is very different. They're not knowing family is not the number one priority. So it's always very strange when you come across someone who is so family orientated, you know, from the Western side of things. Right. Yeah. Um, How long did you guys stay out there for? It was about three days. Okay. Yeah, so we got out on the Friday afternoon, left Sunday afternoon, mm. something like that. We kind of wish we booked it till the Monday, so we'd had a little bit more time to relax gotcha. with folks. But yeah, it was a night. It was a weekend camping with a wedding thrown in the middle. Right, of it. right. Now with traditional wedding, there's always like this stress factor. You know, you you're there running all over the place trying to make sure everything is like, you know, proper and things go as planned, and you got to get on the phone like. How liberating was it? Was it very much the same thing now that you were kind of like in the middle of nowhere and throwing this thing? Was it stress no, off? It was, pretty it was still pretty stressful? No. The, my wife and I have been planning events together since we were 15. Okay. 
roughly 14 like this would have been like the 25th event that we've planned together because we used to we've done fundraisers and other things like mm-hmm. this and so doing a wedding was just it was just another event another for us event to plan for together yeah and so it was actually it was super nice it was super relaxed super not stressful like pe- we had people uh, instead of giving us wedding gifts they brought in we did a potluck mm-hmm. so they brought food instead of giving us wedding okay. gifts um Way too many generous people gave us wedding gifts as well as food. As well as food, so it's but, double yeah. the gifts. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, so they, they brought in food. I'll, I have an aunt who's an amazing, like, organizing person. Mm-hmm. And so we just kind of handed off, like, can you organize the food while we're getting our photos done? Mm-hmm. And then she dealt with the most stressful part of the day for us. Wow. Um, and then, yeah. But other than that, it, yeah, it really was not stressful, which was just lovely. Right. Right? Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So you said 15, eh? You guys have been planning things since 15. So yep. when did you all meet? Uh, I would have been in grade one. She would have been in kindergarten. We got together. Like, we, we've known each other since we were, like, kids. kids. Okay. We got started dating when we would have been, like, 18. But we were in, like, the same elementary school, same junior high, same high school. Met in church up in the northeast. Like, we were in church together all through our years. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that was the greatest thing. Like, the guy who did the ceremony for us was our minister for 16 years, and he's, like, a second dad to me. Um, like, I grew up in his house. His two boys were in my bridal party. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is what made it so this nice is so, so this not this stressful. Like cause go family here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. It was a big, huge family thing, which was just... That's amazing. So when did you, like, at what point did you start to develop the eye for her? Or who started to develop the eye for who? Because, no, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm sure, like, Going to school with somebody since grade one and, you know, kindergarten, it's like, you know, people get annoying and you, like, take your own path. But when when did it all come together? Of like, uh, So she says that she thinks that she f- um, had a crush on me the first time in, like, grade four. Really? Um, we danced together at a, what was it, the Millennium Party? Okay. Like, for the year 2000. Yeah, yeah. We had a da- like, we had a dance at the church okay. and we were dancing together. And she can trace it back to about there where she was kind of playing around with feelings for it then and then. We got started dating, actually, when we were, I would have been 18. She would have been in her grade 12 years, so she would have been 17. She's a year younger than me. Wow. Her. But, yeah, so it would have been right around then and kind of took her out of the blue because, like, admittedly, I dated two of her friends while we were in oh. high school, too. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> it's the typical, like, we, we circled around each right, other right, for our entire right. lives. Did she hold that against you? No. No, she's a super forgiving person. She is yeah, super she's forgiving. A, then. She's amazing. <laughs> the heart on her is just, like, it's one of my it's favorite butter. things. It's butter. Yeah. When someone has a really oh, yeah. good heart, it's butter. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, her heart's butter. Yeah. She also loves butter. So, like, yeah, no, I couldn't say enough, like, amazing things just about, like, so I was in jur- I was a journalist mm-hmm. for a long time in our relationship, and I would have stayed in it, except she went into development studies, um, and she really wanted to go and work with people, and not in the typical, like, I'm going to go and build a house mm-hmm. and, like, make their lives mm-hmm. better, but go somewhere and actually, like, help raise them up, like that teach man mm-hmm. fish kind of mm-hmm. idea. Um, and that's really her ideas in that. That really brought me back into a fold of wanting to do not-for-profit work, wanting to be more involved in, like, fundraising, volunteering, doing all that kind of stuff just because of how huge and warm and welcoming her heart mm. is. So, so she kind of pulled you into that aspect of it. Oh, yeah, through and through That's and through. pretty amazing. So how long have you guys been together? Uh, oof, we're looking at 13 years now we've been together. So we married for a year. We've been together for 13. Wow. Yeah. What's been, like, the... The one time where it's like, yo, have you guys had any bad fights? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We What's the absolute we worst like, one, and how long did you all not talk to each other for? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yo, we enemies now. Don't call me up. I'm out of here. <laughs> like, we're not talking about this right. anymore. Uh, I was living in Glasgow. So we spent a huge, ch- we've spent huge chunks of our relationship in different cities. Got it. It's so like I, she was in Ontario for school for a while. I lived in a different town. Like she lived in Cuba for six months. I like, we've been all Just over the place apart yeah, yeah. from each other in long distance relationships. And that's long distance. You're going to fight every once in a while, right? Things are going to great. Just that happens. But in Glasgow, uh, it was near the end of the semester and we were, we were butting heads about her coming and what we were doing and mm-hmm. just like it had. Yeah, it was it was interesting and it was a hard one to go through and it was like things were still super tense even when she got to the airport a little bit until we until we got to spend a little bit of time mm-hmm. together at that moment. Okay. So what what brought that about? Was this, what was the frustration coming from? Um partly planning trying to plan a trip from like two sides of the two sides and of to things. meet and to like she was meeting me in Glasgow, which is in like a city right. in Scotland. Um 
and then like what we were going to do, where we were going to go, what she wanted to see and what I wanted to see and how we were traveling. And like her budget was slightly higher than what mine was after being in like living overseas for the last mm-hmm. six months. And there was just all those little factors of trying to plan a trip when you're not in the same space right, with right. each other was, and then just end of semester, like it was my final exams and all that kind right. of stuff. Just bad stress. A lot of stress and us, so. everything just kind of on four at once. Yeah. Yeah, well, and we're communicating over, like, an eight-hour time period, like, eight-hour time difference. So the only times we can talk, it's either, like, late at night for me, early in the morning for her, like, just... So it became one yeah. of those, I, I tell people, whenever I meet people and they're like, yeah, I'm having, like, sleep problem, like, deprived from sleep or whatever, and I'm like, yo, do you have a wife, like, back home somewhere, like, in the village or something like that? Because the time difference, if you have a wife someplace, some random place, you're going to be kept up all night and it throws everything off and you're always just going to be grumpy. So that's kind of like my joke with him. I'm like, do you have a wife in some village or something? Like, what? why are you not sleeping during the night? I'm going to bed just fine. Why are you not sleeping? <laughs> um, what was the greatest lessons that maybe you learned from like long distance relationship? Cause that's a tough one. Yeah, they were tough. It truthfully, it's just open and honest communication. Like just being, being willing to communicate and talk about mm-hmm. things and understand how to talk something through and not like do that silent treatment. Like you should understand what I'm mm-hmm. feeling right now, but actually just voice, voice it, it out and talk mm-hmm. about it um, and be honest about your feelings and where you're at and your dreams and your goals and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So, and that's, that's the best thing about this is like right now we'll, we can, we'll be in the same room, but we will still chat about everything. We'll talk about everything. We'll, we'll communicate open and honestly. And that was definitely from being long distance. Cause you don't have a choice. If you don't uh, communicate, you're not going to, Stay together right, right. long distance. No, that definitely makes a lot of sense. And do you think, like, a lot of people grasp that idea now? Like, how many of the population, or what's the percentage in your mind of the population that is kind of, like, practicing that sort of healthy relationship? Not nearly as many as we should yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Really, like, yeah, that's, that's kind of where I was coming at from. I used to work with uh, university mm-hmm. students, and I was kind of finding that, that they – they tried to withhold too much of mm-hmm. themselves and tried to like match themselves to being what they think everyone else around them wants Got them to em. be, which is like, A, you're not going to find friends that way. You're not going to find a partner that way because you're not being mm-hmm. who you are. And then you're also going to cause yourself so much stress and so much anxiety and so much angst because you're trying to hide mm-hmm. who you are. So just hang out, be yourself, talk honestly and openly. And that, like, just based on my experience with students, that's not happening as often as we should be. Like, that's why I like chatting mm-hmm. with you. Right, that's why we. That's why. Yeah, so yeah. You, right, like you were so uh, you're so authentic and you're so real yeah, yeah. Things that, and I love to talk. Yeah, but it, but it's funny too because it's like you know when I was a kid, I talking was not really like a, a strength of mine. I was super quiet and super super shy as a kid. My mother actually, because you know we left Liberia, went to Ivory Coast, and so I learned how to speak French. Now because she couldn't speak French, she would have to take me along a lot of the time to be like a translator and I would be the absolute worst translator because I was so shy and she would get so mad and it was like it was it was so bad the whole experience was bad so it's it's ironic that um that I would grow up like so shy but then you know later on in life I become like this very open place but I think too it comes down to um, dealing with certain things, like whatever experiences you had in your life, whether it was uh, extreme trauma experiences or just uh, what is family matters, those are things you have to deal with because those things will shut you up. And you kind of have to, my way of dealing with um, the loss of family members and, and everything else that has happened in my life is to challenge myself. I would literally sit there and write out a few years back before I got into the point that I would write out all the things that I wanted to do and I write out all the method of how I wanted to do these things and all the all of my weaknesses, all of my strength and then focus primarily on all of my weaknesses. Everything. So and and through that and I met some very, very amazing people too who that were like very honest, very open. People always say your surrounding will dictate who you are. Essentially, and that's actually like very, very true because oh, yeah. honesty doesn't come naturally for everyone. Some of us have to learn how to be honest. Like I, for one, had to learn how to be honest, not just with myself, but also with like the people around me. And so since I've been able to do that, 
I'm more open now. I can approach you and I can talk to you because I already have nothing else to hide. There's nothing in the closet that needs to be in the closet. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it throw me off. Like, people say, oh, some people are very conservative and, uh, you know, they just don't want to talk and they don't want to, they don't want to do this, they don't want to do that. But essentially, um, it comes down to that individual being as honest with themselves as possible in order to... Um, get honest with the world around them um and i know we just ran out of time but you know we can extend it for another five or so because i still want to dig more into what's going on uh with you and your wife and everything like that so in terms of um at what point did you all decide like okay because relationship doesn't start off with honesty it starts off with one person trying to impress the other person. It it might have been different from you all because you all grew up. Yeah, we together. had a different, totally different yeah, starting yeah. point, right? Like there was none of that meet the parents right, right. awkwardness or anything like that. Well, there might have been on your <laughs> side because I was like, I, I don't know what her parents yeah, thought. Of me remember, we remember Robert? Dating, remember that guy? Remember this guy? <laughs> but like, my mom was her Sunday Got school it. teacher, right? Like this. So th there was that little element of like the kind of not playing games thing, but just like what typically mm -hmm. starts at the beginning of a relationship. But it was much more like we were friends and because we were friends, there was a deeper level mm -hmm. of connection when we decided to actually take that next step forwards with things. So that was nice to have. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, super amazing. Um, I mean, now looking back, you all must be very glad as to where you are now as people, as human being. Oh yeah. She has helped me grow so much. And turn into like who I like. I will say this full and honestly is that like I would still I would probably be like that stereotypical alcoholic journalist who wor doesn't sleep enough and works too much and all that kind of stuff. If it wasn't for her like dragging me back towards a much healthier, much happier mm. lifestyle, that's that's a better place to be. That's more fun. That's like I just mm -hmm. I like where we're at. I like who we are. I like the plans. We yeah, have yeah. In the future, so. um, did you ever had um, any problems with like alcohol? Maybe. No, I could just see, like, you get home from a long day of, like, working and the things. Like, I was the, I covered the RCMP gotcha. meetings and things like that. And so I could just see, like, I could see it coming down the road. Like, I was drinking, like, I would drink, like, four or five energy drinks every day and just to stay awake for work yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. So journalism is not a healthy field. Like, it really is not a healthy field. No, it's not. <laughs> 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 stay away from stress as much as possible. Um, yep. <laughs> what is the, what's the, um... I have a question for you. What's what's life? What does it mean to you? It means part like having fun is like the like flippant answer, but it means like having something that fulfills you and that like makes you feel deep and like heartfelt emotions towards things. That's not necessarily mm -hmm. always good emotion, but just like not hiding yourself away from feeling like everything that this world has to offer and seeing everything that this world has to offer. Um, there are so many beautiful and fantastic moments. Like there's that there's that saying like mm -hmm. good vibes only. Mm -hmm. I hate that saying. That's a like, new saying. So though. much. Because, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good yeah, vibes. A new saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I, uh, it bugs me because like then it's like you're you're discounting like the negative right. aspects of our life that are such a huge fundamental part of who we are and the feelings that we have and things like that. And it's like we it's not going to be happy all the time. But any of those like really sad moments are going to help us feel deeper and happier moments. So like. I'm just rambling here about what life is, but life to me is about feeling everything as deeply and as mm -hmm. heartfelt as you can. And about seeing the world. Like, get out there and meet people and say hi. And, like, we have beautiful mountaintops and we have beautiful oceans and get out there and see it. Right? Don't stay stuck in your little rut at home with your little, like, <laughs> go to your cubicle every day and come home and go to your cubicle every day. No. Go okay, go, <laughs> go and get out into our world and go see shit. Like, One of the things, Robert, that social media is still, is so, like... Uh, it's so notorious for now are all these positive sort of um, uh, what, what do you call quotes, quotations. Yeah. And and sometimes I wonder like of the people. If you're positive people, do you really need to be putting our positive quotation out there every single day, reminding the world? I wonder sometimes like how authentic the people that are putting these things out there actually are, or even believe in it. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Like I, like 
you're not going to be positive and happy and whatever every single day. I think it's fine to put it out there and right. try to encourage people to be like change mm-hmm. your mindset and be positive about what's happening and stuff. But don't discredit those those mm-hmm. hard moments. Mm-hmm. Don't discredit the difficult parts of our mm-hmm. lives because they're there mm-hmm. and they're there to help us grow and feel and be a part of that right. human experience. No, I agree with that because sometimes that's one of the things I kind of like, you know, it's great. It's great when it comes your way and that's fine. But I think like, you know, certain individuals is always putting it out there. It's like, and then you see their lifestyle too, because interestingly, with social media, it's so funny. You could do, they'll make like a positive post one minute and then they will have like a photo that completely contradict <laughs> everything else they're doing or make another post about something else. And it's like, who, like, why are you, why don't you just take some time to yourself? And 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 get strong in whatever it is you're trying to put out there, and I and I see that it's coming from a good place and a good heart, but it's like sometimes we just need to take a break, take a pause, relax, fall back, break away from certain attraction, um, yeah. And I think you know social media has gotten a little uh, crazy. So how have you been able to use social media to your advantage with what you do? Uh showing off some adventures and trying to encourage people to get out there and see what we've got to mm-hmm. see in this world. That's really what I try to do with it is I don't, I don't try to like say like, Oh, here's this like fantastic, beautiful quote or anything like that. It's like, no, here's mm-hmm. this beautiful place. It's not that hard to get to strap on some shoes and walk in and see it or just get in your car and go see something. Get on well, when we can get right. on a plane and go <laughs> see something. <laughs> so <laughs> That's, that's like really, that's what I see social media as being is it's like this great place to connect with other people who, who want mm-hmm. to do the things that you want to do and want to like it's it's an it's another space for us to connect with other people who are like like us and want to th- want to see the same thing absolutely well with that said um any final words or advice for the people the audience out there where they can find you and what's coming up in your life and are you planning on having kids anytime soon <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no kids anytime soon. We're good with that one. Uh, Right, you're like the uncle. I'm the same way. I'm like, call me uncle. I I want nieces and nephews. (laughs) Just don't bring any money away for now. (laughs) Um, Yeah, no. If I had one thing to say to people, it's it's like anyone can make art. Art's not this scary, hoity-toity thing that we've made it out to be. You can make it. You can build it. You can. If you, it doesn't Mm. even have to be good. Right. You can just go make it. Right, and just enjoy the process and find find what your creative process is and have some fun with it. That's really what I'd say to people for that. If you want to find out more, like we're doing a course right now on how you do Mm -hmm. photography for travel. Um, So we're in the process of building that. Hopefully it'll be up for sale sometime in the near future through the Travel and Adventure Photography School. Um, That's the podcast that we run right now. It's called the Travel and Adventure Photography School. Our goal with that is to be able to teach everybody that they can document their adventures Mm -hmm. regardless of what camera they use. And here's some some of the ways to do it. Uh, coming up on there, we're going to be talking about like doing fall photography in the near future. We're going to be doing some work on like how you do rock climbing photography, stuff like that. So we're going to start mm-hmm. teaching more of the adventure side of doing that. And you can find us on every podcasting platform out there at the moment. It's like Apple Podcasts, mm-hmm. Spotify, all those good things. Uh, you can find us on Instagram. It's Travel Adventure Photo School. And then you can find me on Instagram at Robert Massey Photography if you want to follow along on some adventures and do that stuff. Like I think my next trip, I'm headed out backpacking mm. at the beginning of October. So we're headed into Jewel Bay, which is just a nice little easy trip in, but it'll be a good weekend to hang out. And it's my wife's first Really? Backpacking. <laughs> After so all these years? Document some stuff in there. After all these years, all it's right. her first backpacking trip. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> um, that's pretty awesome. And look, I want to thank you so much. I and the audience really appreciate you being here on this podcast uh, with us. And, um, you know, I'm wishing you every luck. I'm, I'm ruling for you severely. People need to check out your your podcast especially those that are inspiring inspiring photographers and it's a great place not just to start but to learn because you do have the goodies and also to just to quickly remind people here again you can find 18 avenue podcast on every platform um available out there to you where you currently listen to your podcast you can watch it on youtube if you're into the video aspect of it you can just listen to the audio if that's what you chose as well. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in and supporting uh, week in and week out. Um, yeah, and your 
we will do everything we can in our power to continue to bring you uh, new guests and uh, new ideas, and we can all learn from each other. That's what the platform is all about. Robert, thank you so much for being here once again. And what we do around here, we say peace out. Thank you so much, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> peace. <laughs> 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 <laughs>